Now, if you're like me, who has a large number of Toyo devices, then extracting the local key is a tedious task. But what if I told you that now it's super simple to extract them all by using this Homebridge plugin? Yep, it's now a straightforward process. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now this is a follow up to my previous video in integrating your to your devices using their cloud services. And as I said in that video, you always need to have an active internet connection to interact with your to your devices through the Apple Home app all by using a Homebridge plugin. However, there is a growing need of protecting your privacy and also have local control on your Tuya devices just in case you lose your internet connection or to avoid any network intrusion or malware as well. And to do that, you need to have the local key to control your Tuya devices locally. But, yep, there's a but. I noticed that through Home Assistant's Tuya local add-on that Tuya now ships their products with different protocols ranging from 3.1 up to 3.5, which is hard to know until you receive the product. And by the way, I have devices that supports the 3.4, 3.3 and 3.5 protocol. And for some odd reason, I also got to know that a replacement device I bought from the same vendor supports 3.4 and 3.5 protocol. I know, it's confusing. With that being said, up until May 3rd, I also didn't find a working local Tuya Homebridge plugin that supported the 3.4 Pro version. But finally, the developer was able to get the plugin to work with 3.4 protocol devices. I have tested it. I can control my lights locally. It supports Apple's adaptive lighting feature and is also my go-to Tuya local plugin as well. Now, if you're asking me, how about 3.5 protocol support? Well, we will need to wait and see until the developer gets his hand on a device and update the plugin accordingly. Now to the fun stuff. In my previous videos, I have shown you all that you could extract the local keys through a command line interface or through their IoT cloud platform. But here's the thing, it's always a tedious process and there was a lot of copying and pasting involved. And if you're like me, who has a large number of Tuya devices, it's boring. I mean, it's okay if it's just a device or two. I have around 30 plus devices and you may have more. Now, the thing is, I found that through this Homebridge plugin, which I have an entire video on, once you configure it and restart the service, it freaking automatically gets the tokens and stores them on the device that is hosting the Homebridge service no fuss absolutely so say goodbye to typing more commands or copying pasting every device id into the cloud platform so what will we need to have your two devices to work locally and to make that local key extraction process super simple one make sure you have your toy devices installed and reserve the device's ip address two you will need a text editor I will be using Subline and I have left the link in the description. And to enable the integration with HomeKit, we will be using HomeBridge running on a Raspberry Pi. Plus I've also left links in the description to install HomeBridge on multiple hardware platforms. So let's not waste any time and let's dive in. Now, before we go ahead and extract the Tuya local keys, I'd like to touch base on reserving IP addresses. So once we go ahead and install the Tuya devices on your network, you have to make sure you reserve the IP address for that device. This helps the plugin using the device ID, the local key, as well as the IP address to locate the device on your network. And it also makes the interaction a lot more quicker and swifter. Now, how do you do it? One way is you could go open up the Tuya app. You can tap on any device and tap on device information. And what you want to do is you want to go and copy that MAC address. Because what happens is when you add in Tuya devices on your network, it kind of shows in a different name as WLAN or WIP. So it's hard to know which is what device. So you can go and copy an IP address, paste in the search bar or press command F or control F in your router's DHCP settings and you will do it. So in my case over here, since I'm using the Unify network, 
I know all of my Twitter devices are segregated by vendor and where it's connected and what is the MAC address. So if I go and pick up any of my Twitter devices, you'll see that all of them have a fixed IP address. So I've done that for all of the 30 devices I have. So when I go ahead and configure the plugin with the device ID, local key and the IP address, it becomes a lot more easier. So before we go into extracting any local keys, please go ahead and reserve the IP addresses. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get the Tuya local key. Before you go and extract it, you have to definitely go ahead and access the Tuya IoT platform. You've got to log in. You have to sync the image and it'll allow you to get into the platform. Now, I've gone into detail into this video on how to set up your cloud platform project. Now, once that is done, you want to go ahead and create a new cloud platform project. Once that is created, you want to go ahead and add in all of the options that is available, which I've shown in that video, add in your data center, and then you want to save it. At the same time, you don't want to forget to renew the IoT core subscription. Once that is done, you want to go ahead and link the Tuya app with the cloud project. Now again, don't worry, you can consult the video which I've left the link in the description. It will show you on how to get right here. I've have a detailed explanation there. Once you have it all linked within the Tuya platform, then you will go to the plugins and then within the Tuya app, which I've also mentioned in that video, you want to go ahead and configure all of the information. So that would be the access ID, access secret, the country code, username and password. Once that is done, go ahead and restart the service. Now, once the service is restarted, this is where the magic is of this plugin to get all of the information. And once it fetches the device list that you see right here, you want to scroll back up and you want to go and see where that device list is stored. So in this case, the device list is saved at this location. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and buy, and this is on my Synology NAS. I will show you the same process in Raspberry Pi. So you go to your Synology NAS, you want to log in, you want to go to file station, you want to go to home bridge. This home bridge is set up uh, through DSM-7. You want to go to persist. And if you go to the home bridge instance, this is where the device list is. It also provides the name to your device list. So here it is. And then you want to make sure you've already installed text editor. That's it. Double click. And now you've got the local keys for all of the devices, all of the devices that is available in the to your IoT platform. It's gone ahead and got you all that information. And this is for the next device, the local key and for the next device and so forth. That's how easy it is to get the local key. Now this we have done through the Synology NAS. Let's go and see how it is in the Raspberry Pi. So I'll go ahead and access my production environment. And I've already gone ahead and configured it. Again, go through that video on how to configure the cloud platform as well as this plugin. Once it's configured, I'm just gonna go ahead and restart the service, go to terminal, wait for the service to start. It'll go ahead and download the device list and then you want to scroll to where that location is. So go through the logs, take your time and you will see that the device list has been stored at this location. Now, how do you copy this file to your computer? So what we're going to do is you're going to go ahead and open up terminal and then you're going to type in the command called SCP, which means secured copy. And then you're going to be following it by the information to access the Raspberry Pi, which in this case is Pi at the rate of 192. Same process how you would SSH in secured access. So it will be replaced with SCP. And then you're going to type in the two dots and then you're going to go back and just copy this information where the file is stored. Command C or Control C. You want to go ahead and paste. You want to make sure there is no space between the two dots and the forward slash. Once that is done, now that is the location. Now, next one is you want to mention where you want to transfer that file. So in this case, I want to transfer the file on the computer. So space forward slash users forward slash eddy forward slash downloads. And I'm going to just hit enter. It's going to go ahead and ask me the password, which is raspberry hit enter. And it's gone ahead and transferred the file. Now, if I go ahead and open up finder, you'll see that the file is right here. Now I'm just going to right click in it, I'm going to open it and go into sublime text. And there you have it. You have all the local keys together with the ID. And if I close this arrow, it's the same thing for all of the 28 devices, ID, 
local key. Well, now with this being done, you don't need to access the cloud platform, go to the API Explorer, go to the query device details and copy paste each device ID. It's that easy. Now from here, let's go ahead and configure one device. Now, if you go ahead and access homebridge.io and just type Tuya, you're going to see so many plugins. And there's one plugin that I've been using since 2021 or 2020 is from I, Ryan Khan. He's the best plugin. And there was another developer, Steve, who helped in updating this plugin to support the 3.4 protocol. Now, with that being said, let's go to Homebridge, which is on my Raspberry Pi. Go to plugins and we're going to type in Homebridge dash Tuya. Enter. And this is the version you want to download, version 3.1. Go ahead and install it. Latest version. Once that is done, you want to go ahead and plug in config in. I'm just going to put the Geo 10 spotlight that I have. So that would be white and colored light bulb. And I'm just going to go ahead and select one, which be the left gourmet. I'll select the ID, I'll give it a name, the Tuya ID, the Tuya key, which is right here. The IP address, which I had mentioned, that would be here. Settings, manufacturer, two year. Now, data points. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. If you want to get better functionality out of the device, you need to populate the data points. Don't go by default. Now for this, unfortunately, you need to access to your IoT platform. You want to go to cloud. You want to go to API Explorer. And then you want to go to device control. You want to query properties. And then you want to go ahead and get the device ID. Just paste it here all of the data points for each of the functionality. So in this case, to get this light in, we need to get the DP power. So in this case, it would be 21. For the brightness, bright value, it's 22. For the color temperature, temp value, 23. Minimum white color. So you wanna make sure you have these two values populated correctly. I know from the product details, the technical details, it told me that it supported 2,700 and the max color is 6,500. So there's, there's no need to put in this DP mode. The rest of the values will leave as is. Click on save and you want to restart Homebridge. Now, once the plugin is restarted, I also wanted to let you know is it auto discovers all of the two year devices on your network. Now, if you have a VLAN and you have Homebridge on another VLAN and the two year devices on your IoT segment, you have to find a way to let port 6666 and 6667 flow through for it to be discovered. If those are not enabled, you won't be able to auto discover your devices, you will not even access them. In my case, my home bridge and two air devices are all on the same VLAN. You see this error right here, the dot 82, this is a 3.5 device. So that's why it's giving an error and it's not able to. So you have two devices, 82 and 92. Those are 3.5. Now with that being said, if I go to my Apple Home app, you'll quickly see that the light that I added supports adaptive lighting. And these are the ones that I've added from the Tuya online plugin. And then now if I click on this one, you can now increase, decrease the brightness. You can change colors and you've got full total control. You can do this now for all of the devices you have. And you still need to use Tuya IoT's platform to get the data points. Don't forget to populate the data points for your devices. And that, my friends, is how easy it is to extract the local key all by using a Homebridge plugin. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more DIY smart home videos. Until the next time, cheers and happy automation.